1981, there was a murder so shocking that it changed the entertainment world forever, yet the killer was never brought to justice. Now, almost 40 years later, we're reopening the case, reviewing old leads as well as new evidence, to try and make sense of a killing which gave rise to a massacre. The who, what, why, and how of when video killed the radio star. Welcome to the Radio Star Murders. Hey everybody, welcome to the Radio Star Murders. This is a podcast where we are trying to figure out if video did in fact kill the radio star. We're going to be analyzing music videos and whether or not the visual aspect helped the audio aspect. My name is Wes Teasdale. I'm joined by Clay McCormick. Clay McClay. You kind of chose this one. I don't think we're we're not officially mm. themed yet, right? We're not doing a theme off of this, but I think you chose this one. Um, this do you want to, do you want to is explain the why? first. This is the first one of our themes. So this is uh, this is a double theme actually, because I am currently covered and I'm glistening with baby oil. I've got my ripped T-shirt on because <laughs> this is uh, this is the WrestleMania special. Yeah. Oh, that's um, right. That's why we're doing this it. Is coming out on or around the week that WrestleMania came out, and I figured why not do something uh, appropriate to that. Also, our first theme is going to be uh, music videos for songs from movies, which this also covers. Uh, we are we are listening to and watching The Goonies Are Good Enough by Cyndi Lauper. Yes, um, yes. I guess I'll just jump into it, give you a brief breakdown of what's, what happens in this video. Yes, give us a quick uh, synopsis of this, this yes. uh, epic. Cindy Lauper and her family of wrestling pirate descendants struggle to keep their small business gas station slash vintage garbage shop afloat through side jobs and schemes that are a dark foreshadowing of the modern gig economy of 2019. Mm. Ironically, if their store had moved in like a block away from where I live, it would probably be a hipster's paradise and be doing really well. <laughs> anyway, shortly thereafter, their creditors show up in the form of the Iron Sheik, Classy Freddy Blassie, and Rowdy Roddy Piper who exit an awesome limo with DeLorean-style gull-wing doors. And from here on, I'm just going to suggest you watch the video because, honestly, anything I write will not do justice how to totally whacked out this video is. The, there's pirate stuff, subtitles, mildly racist jokes, uh, <laughs> absurdity that borders on the surreal, the fabulous Mula driving around Nikolai Volkov while he's milking a plastic cow, unexpected Benihana, and fourth wall destruction by Steven Spielberg, all in what can only be described as a fever dream I would have had as a four-year-old. Uh, there's also a second part that features more pirate stuff, the same exact song, <laughs> and Andre the Giant being tulpid out of thin air to save the day and run off the creditors. Uh, not sure how that helps their money problems, though. I only I only watched the first part of this. You sent me the link to the second part, sort of like yeah. right before we you started recording. I'm, not, I'm, yeah, not, you don't need to watch the I'm not watching it. And I will say that um, this is... Uh, I'll just, I'll lead off strong. This is the mm. worst one of these that we've done so far. Um, I, th I think that this <laughs> fails on like virtually every level. We're going to start with the song because the song is kind of, uh, that's a, the kind of the, the way that the structure of the show works. Mm. This is by far the worst song I think that we've done. And um, it, like, you know, imagine Dragon's Thunder was a bad song. This is like a song that no one even really tried to do anything with. It, right. it, it feels... The instrumentation is so sparse. The lyrics are basically meaningless and mm -hmm. there's nothing really hooky or interesting about it. It doesn't have a good hook to it. It doesn't have anything that really gets you going. I've listened to it a bunch of times. It hasn't sunk in. And I was like, this song sucks. And I was pleased. <laughs> I was pleased to look up on Wikipedia. <laughs> Apparently Cindy Lauper thinks the same thing because she yes. hated the song and did not perform it for like two decades uh, at any concert. She started to perform it once her sort of star faded a little bit and she needed to, to, to do what the people wanted to get some uh some more money out of it but it's a it's a bad song it's really bad yeah it's it's really um it feels like a parody of a cindy lopper song it feels like bottom of the barrel common denominator if you're going to make a style parody if you're weird al and you're going to make a style parody of cindy lopper it would be this song yeah it's kind of nebulous lyrics about being good enough and then that whoa, 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 the thing that she's really known for um and as a movie as a song for a movie i think this is something we can get into as we cover these songs from movies um i don't know exactly how this song was used in the movie 
because I don't really like the Goonies that much. Mm, same. Um, but it feels like a song you could play repetitively in the background during the movie and have it be feel more like a soundtrack song as opposed to something like Kiss from a Rose, which is just there to put seal on the soundtrack. Sure. Well, um, yeah, I would say the distinction is this song feels to me it's the kind of boring, bland song that would play in a bar scene of a movie. Like it would be, yes, it would be yeah. in the background, and you'd be like, "Okay, I don't need." To, I clearly like it, they don't want to play a song that would distract you because you'd be like, "Oh, I love that song." Like I, they wouldn't yes. play Stone Song; they'd want there's, to play this horrible song that you just acknowledge as music that exists in the background. There's uh there's this great song from the Weird Al movie UHF. Where uh, it's just a short clip of a song that he he needed music in this scene, and they didn't want to license anything, so he just wrote something really stupid. Yeah, yeah. And it's a, he wrote this song called "Let Me Be Your Hog," <laughs> and the the all it says it, the lyrics are "Let me be your hog, let me be your hog, yeah, baby, 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 baby," and that's the whole song. Yeah. And it's that exact. It's it's like a thirty second clip, and it totally does its job. <laughs> um, but yeah, this seems like that where it's like. I know Cindy Lauper was was in charge of the I think the entire musical soundtrack for the movie, so she got a lot of the bands and stuff that did uh, songs for the Goonies. Yes, and I it's it's almost like they were like, yeah, we also we'd like you on the soundtrack as well. And she's like, all right, I'm real busy. Uh, how about I give you the 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 uh, the the base level Cindy Lauper <laughs> thing? And they're like, that's all we want, just something we could put in the background that sounds like you. It's the song that if her contract was like, you need to have ten songs for this album, and she had nine. It should be like, okay, yes, here's the, yeah. here's the 10th song for you guys. Yeah. Like it's, it's, yeah. it's barely a song and it, the, the lyrics are, the lyrics are vague enough where you can tell the person doesn't have a point about what they're writing. They're just kind of doing this thing. And the only thing that's kind of interesting about the the song itself is that it's a, the chorus implies that it's a sad song. It, it's saying if mm. it's good, if something's good enough for you, then it's good enough for me. And good enough is never really a quality descriptor, like going, oh, this is good enough. Uh, never is like a positive aspect. So the it's always um it's always nice when a sad song is done as a happy song, which is kind of like what yeah. Heya is famous for. There's something really satisfying about doing that. And yeah, I love those songs. This is kind of that because the lyrics, while they're not overtly sad <laughs> or pointless, of, she's. I just realized she's probably singing what she's feeling as she's writing it. It's like, yeah, this is good enough. <laughs> if it's good enough for you, it's good enough for me. I bet that's probably how it, they, they probably wrote the music and she was in the booth and they're like, what do you think of this? And she's probably like, yeah, it's good enough. Good enough for me. Good enough. Hey, you know what? Let's just let's just riff on that. Let's just go with that. This is this song is totally fine for what we needed to be. Feeling down in the dumps about it. Yeah. Do you, do you have any thoughts about I don't. It's a song that's not even interesting to discuss because I think of how bland and boring it is. It's a, we talked before about the 80s were seen as like a, uh, maybe they had the bad cultural understanding of what pop songwriting was, but this is kind of the example mm. of it. It's just such a stupid, boring song. Uh, if you don't have well, anything, let me know about the music video and we can move into that. Well, uh, it's, it's last thing on the music, I, 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 th I think what's interesting about this and why it actually is successful as a... Um, Albeit a shitty Cindy, Cindy Lauper song, why it's successful as a Cindy Lauper song is she's an example of an artist who has such a distinctive style and distinctive voice that she can just give you, you know, gibberish, and you know that it's her, mm. and it's it, it does the job that it needs to. Like they, I, uh, they actually, I don't know if you watch Bob's Burgers, but they did a, um, they actually wrote a parody of this for an episode of Bob's Burgers that was very Goonies. Uh, referential or inspired and um she actually recorded the parody of it and it's it's it, it sounds exactly like it and it's the fact that it's her makes it clearly sound like her yeah obviously yeah um but yeah it's the same thing it's gibberish lyrics about whatever silly thing they're doing but it's it's not a great song it, the, the parody is probably better than the original frankly <laughs> um <laughs> Because they're coming at it from a bit of a different angle, right? But yeah, she. I I always thought she kind of got the short end of the stick. I think she's got a fantastic voice, um, and she wrote some some good hooky songs. Uh, but I, uh, my mother always used to say that uh, if it wasn't for Madonna, Cyndi Lauper would have been the the biggest female artist in the '80s, and she's probably not wrong. I don't know. Maybe she is. I don't know. Yeah, I think um, Madonna has a better grasp of the visual aspect of what's going mm -hmm. on. Like Cindy Lauper, 
kind of a mess. Kind kind of <laughs> kind of a mess. Like it's it's a little yeah. bit all over the place. It is a you know the I was looking. This will be a good segue into the video. The video has all mm. these wrestlers in it, right? And I was mm-hmm. doing the research for it, and the reason is that apparently at the time her boyfriend slash manager thought that mm-hmm. it would be good for her career to move into wrestling to like associate with wrestling for some reason. Oh, really? I thought she just really liked wrestling. No, apparently this was like a, a career motivation from from what oh. I was reading about it. And interesting that to me kind of sums up Cindy Lauper, why Madonna feels more authentic of an artist. It's because Cindy Lauper always seems like she's trying to be something in a way that mm. I think a, a more uh, lasting artist doesn't feel like they, even if they are being inauthentic, it feels like they're being authentic to what they are. I don't know if this is Star is Born is infecting me, but I feel, I feel like I feel that Cindy Lauper is wearing the cliche punk outfit in this. You know, it's like the yeah. studded belts and the plaid and the sort of cutoff shorts and going, you know, using wrestling in a really cynical kind of way because you want to make inroads in your career to do that. And then with this shitty pop song on top of it, it's like I can kind of understand why Cindy Lauper would not particularly be respected or why if I growing up with her would have a problem with her as an artist. Yeah, I got the impression comparing the two of them that Madonna was more of a business person, whereas Cindy Lauper was just having a good time. Mm, maybe that's true. But would you you would say that I would say that Madonna's vision and songs and albums have more has more of a vision to it than Cindy Lauper's does. Yeah, even, I would say even so. if it's more business like. Yeah, I think Cindy Lauper's a better singer, mm. but Madonna probably is is a better uh, is uh, is artist has a bitter <laughs> yeah big picture understanding of what's going on. Mm. Um, yeah, the wrestling, that's really funny that if her manager thought it would be good business to get into involved with wrestling, I can kind of understand it. Cause at the time, uh, the WWF was on its way up. Like it was Hulkamania era. WrestleMania was coming in. It was starting to build into this big thing. Um, I don't know if I would have bet my house on it, but, uh, it's interesting that that was the, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I would I would guess he is no longer her manager. No, or boyfriend. Hopefully, yeah. Yes. At this point, yeah. So the 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 video um video is kind of nonsense. I, I'm I, yes, I, that's a good way to put it. I, I think Steven Spielberg probably didn't look at any of it before he agreed to be a part of it because I don't think he would want mm-hmm. any kind of association with it. Terribly shot, terribly acted. Uh, wrestling. Well, oh the, come on. Well, the wrestling the res- wrestling is different. The wrestlers. <laughs> yeah, those guys are selling it. I love professional wrestling. I love modern professional wrestling, but the old guys just have that special something that a lot of the the new guys just don't have. Mm-hmm. Cuz like Rowdy Roddy Piper, cocaine, you put you a mean. camera in front of him, it's probably cocaine, yeah. <laughs> but you put Rowdy Roddy Piper in front of a camera, man, it's a good thing that this video takes place in a room full of scenery cuz those guys are chewing every little bit of it. Yeah. And it's fantastic. Rowdy Roddy like, Piper looks two- young, too, because uh, They Live does, would have been yeah. out after soon around this time. He looks totally different from he does in They Live, I think. Yeah, he does. He And I mean, it's it's he's such a different character, too. In that movie, he's so subdued yes. and, and very like Calm. mild-mannered. In this one, he's peak peak Rowdy Roddy Piper, which is, you know. They don't call him Rowdy for nothing. Yeah, he's 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 yeah. definitely a little bit rowdy. There's there's something with the he does something at the end of the second one where uh uh at the end of the second half of the video where Andre the Giant is like chasing him off off the off the scene. Yes. And he starts complaining that this wasn't in his contract, <laughs> that he was going to have to fight Andre the Giant. <laughs> and then as he's I, I would love to know if this was scripted or not. As he's running away, a Camaro turns around the corner and starts driving past the place. And he like slams on the side of it and tries to get in the car. <laughs> and then the car just drives away. <laughs> he doesn't successfully get in the car, but I'm really hoping it was just. A completely incidental person driving by with Rowdy Roddy Piper trying to force his way into this person's car. This uh, this video irritated me as much as the song because it's probably my mm. least favorite kind of video, which feels like no one really... It's very reminiscent of the song. It's like no one really has any idea what's going on. We're just going to kind of yep. shoot and see what happens here. Like there is a there is a plot or whatever you want to call it, but there doesn't feel like there's any kind of direction to what's going on. The scenes are just kind of pointless and goofy. They're like, we're going to pick this guy up and throw him now. We're going to, Cindy Lauper's going to kick the Iron Sheik in the leg and we're going to do this stuff. Then we're going to go to the caves. Um, it's 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 funny when we do this show after doing things like the TV shows where it's like, if a, if something can't hold my attention for five minutes, it's a co- complete mm. failure of something, yeah. I think. And th- this <laughs> video could not hold my attention. It's it's really, it's like the the worst things I find in music videos. 
Well, one of the things I wanted to talk about, especially with this series of uh, m music videos for movies, is how they choose to integrate the film into the video, mm -hmm. if at all. Yes. And I feel like this one is on the more rare side because it's actually kind of it, the the movie is almost incidental to what's going on here. Like they, there's some crossover because I wonder if they're if they're using some of the Goonies set for some of this mountain you know stuff. Yes, I, I, stuff. I, I thought you coming in were. Uh... I would have pegged you as someone who liked the Goonies, so I, I was expecting you no, to have. No, I do not like. The okay, Goonies. yeah, I was, I, all right. So I'm, I don't know anything about the Goonies, really, except the fact that it's a movie. So I can't um, tell you. Yeah, I know. I know that there's, uh, you know, treasure, pirate treasure stuff is a big part of it. The map is the whole catalyst for the story. Yes. Um, but I'm, I, I don't know if the. Uh, uh, they don't have that deformed that, guy in the video. No, they don't. Yeah, I, I couldn't get him apparently. <laughs> um, they. Uh, I wonder if the cave stuff is part of the the Goonies set because I mean that's that seems like an extensive piece of pr um, production design to do for this shitty video. Sure, with the waterfall is the um, big one at the end where she gets yeah, caught in the waterfall. Yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, I think what's interesting looking at these is th this is one. This is a music video for a song for a movie where the movie aspect is sort of tan is kind of incidental. The the pirate stuff, sure. The, the characters from the movie actually show up in the video, which is very rare. Usually it's just clips. Um, and this has clips, but it's not, this isn't like the Goonies music video. It's a Cyndi Lauper music video that happens to have Goonies stuff in it. Yes. Uh, which I think, which is really rare because I, I um, finding other ones to do for this series is going to be interesting because so many of them are just like, seal standing in front of the bat signal yes. while they play clips from Batman Forever or some iteration of that. Um, well, yeah, I, and I guess we'll get to that point when we get to it. Maybe this mm. is just a failure of me not being familiar with the Goonies. Maybe if I loved the Goonies, I would be like, oh, I love this song. Like, this, I can't get enough of this song. Uh, I feel like the... It's... Maybe I guess the, if you're making a music video based off of that, you're kind of trying to evoke the feel of the movie. And maybe mm. that's why, maybe they're doing a good job here because I don't like the Goonies mm. movie and that's why I don't like the movie. Like I just don't, or the, the music video, I just don't care for what they're throwing down here where something like the seal thing, I feel when I hear that song and see the video, it ties me into the movie in a way. Yeah. Like I feel bound yeah. to what that is and that doesn't come across mm -hmm. here. Um, although maybe they're doing their good job because I don't care about the Goonies either. So who knows? No, I, I mean, I... I, I don't think much of this video has anything to do with the Goonies. Like I said, it, it's very incidental. Like, it, uh, it does not feel of a piece to that movie at all. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's, yeah, I think the, the music, the movie music video, like, do you do you feel like, I, I, one thing I think we should probably look at when we cover these things is, in addition to does the video help the song, does the video and the song help the movie? And in this case, I would say no. <laughs> no, I feel that I feel if you're doing a direct music video homage, it has to be clear that you are plugging a movie, you know. And I, yeah. I don't get the sense from that here. Um, right. Right. I feel, you know, with my sele with my selection for next week, um, I think it's much more obvious. And I think that the mm. the the video and the song actually transcends the film, even though if you know that that's what it comes from. Um, but here. It just feels like the Goonies are kind of attached to it, and it's not really pitching yeah. the movie. I feel that these things right. are probably more successful if they are just advertisements for the movie than anything else. Probably, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean... Would you want to see the Goonies if you watched this music video? I'd be like, hell no, I don't want to watch I mean, this movie. if I... Honestly, if I knew nothing about the Goonies, and I knew that if I watched this and I was like, wait, the Iron Sheik and Rowdy Roddy Piper might show up, I would probably <laughs> want to watch the Goonies and then like it even less when I found out that they are not, in fact, in that movie. Oh, my God. This music video broke my back and made me humble. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's no... like the jabroni you are. <laughs> just no good. Um, do you have anything else you want to say about it? I'm kind of uh, that's pretty much it. I, I thought it was tremendously no, uninteresting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Why don't you go ahead? Uh, do, you, do you think that this amplifies the uh, do you think the video killed the radio star here? Or do you think that the song is better on its own without any visual stuff? Um... I can't imagine this song. I'm going to have to say yes only because I can't imagine this song being good on its own. Mm. I don't know. Actually, you know, it's a good question because I, I think, you know what? I'm going to say, I'm going to say no. I don't think the video helps 
because I think the song is innocuous enough that if this was like buried in the middle of a greatest hits album, I would probably be totally cool with it just because it's another Cyndi Lauper sounding song that's very identifiable to her. Mm. I don't think the video adds anything as far as the song goes. And the video, it, uh, it's one of the few times where the video is much, much, much longer than the song. Yeah. So they just keep playing the same song over and over and over again. And it's not adding anything to the video. And what they're showing you is not adding anything to the song. Yeah, I think that the song is so bad to me that your video needs to be exceptional here. And this is this is not <laughs> exceptional. This is just hmm. generic 80s stuff. Um, bad song, though. Bad, bad song, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. That's it. Video did not kill this radio. I, th- I think we're on the same page by the end of it. It's not really a video that benefits the song in any way, although I don't know if the song... Uh, the song is in a pretty rough shape and it's in its, <laughs> its own right, so it's hard to say where to go from long, there. Long story short, it's good enough. It's good enough. It's good, are good enough. And that's the other funny thing. It's such a commercial... Uh, originally, the title was just good enough. And they were like, well, there's not enough Goonies references in the, the music video itself, so slapping mm. it into the title. They also couldn't work the word Goonies into the lyrics, obviously. Yes, so I know. <laughs> they, they had to slap it into the title and it makes no sense. Uh, the Goonies are good enough. That's it. Look up Let Me Be Your Hog by Weird Al. It's a great song. We'll look up that one. You guys can uh, support the show with this social media, Facebook, Twitter, Discord. You can go to patreon.com slash if you want to support the show. There's PayPal. There's merchandise on the store. There's a Teespring link down below. We're going to be back with our continuing coverage of uh, music videos that are influenced by films. or not influenced, but they're sort of part and parcel with films. And my pick for next week, I had hinted at it earlier, my pick is going to be um, Gangsta's Paradise by coolio Ooh, for dangerous good one. for dangerous yeah, minds I, so i don't know how long you want to do this theme for but like as i was thinking about them like man there's so many that i would like to cover but i i don't know how i feel like they're going to eventually end up sort of running the same uh the retreading the same ground yes uh so it's like trying to pick that one where it covers everything i want to talk about is difficult because there's so many that are so much fun yeah i think um Gangster's Paradise is much more famous than the the movie Dangerous Minds yes. is. So I think yes. that this will be it'll be interesting to talk about one that it's like the music, I, the music video played nonstop when it came out. Like th- this was a mm-hmm. big hit, and we'll see how it holds up. Um, and I have not watched Dangerous Minds in a long time. <laughs> so we'll I've never seen the movie. I've never <laughs> seen right. that movie. We'll be we'll have a lot to talk about that. I will um I'll be the resident expert, I guess, for Dangerous Minds when we come back. But that's it, guys. Thank you very you will much. You'll be sitting. You'll be sitting backwards on a chair. Right. Dramatically. Yes, you got to drop it in. And then uh, Michelle Pfeiffer, she was, oh, I was thinking of, there's no Mackay Pfeiffer. I'm confusing Eminem with a cool Coolio, man. Yeah. Slip and slide, slide, slide. It's a fantastic voyage. Guys, we are done with this one. Uh, we're done with the Goonies. It's good enough. I think this podcast was good enough. We're going to call it a day. We'll see you next time with Gangster's Paradise by Coolio. <laughs>